Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a radical exponential equation. We have square root of 2 plus 1 to the power x plus square root of 2 minus 1 to the power x equals 34. And we're going to be solving for the x values. First of all, I want you to note that square root of 2 plus 1 times square root of 2 minus 1 equals 1. Why? Because these two expressions are conjugates, or you could also call them reciprocals. From difference of two squares, their product is 1. So, what happens if you raise both sides to the power x? Nothing changes on the right-hand side. So we can safely say that these two, when multiplied, will give us 1 again. So, this allows us to write the second one, which is this one, right here, as the reciprocal of the first one. So let's go ahead and do that. Square root of 2 minus 1 to the power x equals 1 over square root of 2 plus 1 to the power x. So we'll do some naming here. Let's go ahead and name this square root of 2 plus 1 to the power x something. How about r? This implies r for radical. Square root of 2 minus 1 to the power x equals 1 over r. And now our equation becomes r plus 1 over r equals 34. This is going to turn into a quadratic equation. If you multiply everything by r, we get r squared plus 1 equals 34r. Let's go ahead and bring the 34r to the left-hand side, and then we're going to have our quadratic. How do you solve this quadratic? You can definitely use the quadratic formula, or we can complete the square. Let's go ahead and do that because it seems a little easier. So subtract 1 from both sides. Now, here's what you need to think about. This is a really nice um, technique. If you're trying to complete the square and you have the first two terms, here's what you're supposed to do. The coefficient of x or the coefficient of r, whatever the variable is, in the middle, you take half of that number and then square it, and that's what you have to add to complete the square. So we have to add 17 squared, which is 289 to both sides. But when you add negative 1 plus 218, 289, you get 288. Great. So the left-hand side becomes r minus 17 squared, and the right-hand side is 288. If you take square roots, we're going to get r minus 17 equals plus minus the square root of 288, which can be written as 2 times 144, and then we can go ahead and write this as plus minus 12 root 2. All right, and now we have this equation, r minus 17 is equal to that. We can add 17 to both sides, and we get our value as 17 plus minus 12 root 2. So this gives us two solutions because this is a quadratic equation, right? Which solution are we going to use? We're actually going to use both. So what is r? r is square root of 2 plus 1 to the power x. So we want to raise square root of 2 plus 1 to a power, and we want to get these numbers. First of all, here's what we would like to consider, or I would like to consider. Let me go ahead and start with the positive one first, and then we'll take care of the other one. So we'll take a look at this equation. They're both positive, so that's good. And what do you notice about the left-hand side? Square root of one plus square root of 2 plus 1 is actually greater than 1. Therefore, we have an increasing function, right? This function is increasing all the time. And that is equal to a constant. So there is only one value for which this is true. So let's go ahead and test some values. Square root of 2 plus 1 squared is going to give us square root of 2 squared, which is 2, 2 plus 1, 3 plus 2 root 2. If you take square root of 2 plus 1 to the third power, you're going to get 7 plus 5 root 2. Let me just go ahead and give it to you. It's very easy. You can just use the formulas. Now, notice that as I use higher powers, I'm getting closer to these numbers. So, obviously, we expect x to be larger than 3, right? And if you do square root of 2 plus 1 to the fifth power, you're going to get a larger number, so that means it's going to be between 3 and 5. So, if we test 4... It's kind of easy to do because all you have to do is square this number. That's going to be 9 plus 8, which is 17, plus 12 root 2. Bingo. 
That gives us the answer right away. Of course, it's kind of like guess and check, but we're kind of like an educated guess. So x equals 4 works. But is that the only solution? And even though this function is increasing, our original function is a little different, right? Because it, it's also adding root 2 minus 1 to the x power, and root 2 minus 1 to the power x is actually a decreasing function. So you have the sum of an increasing and a decreasing function. So what is the sum going to be like, right? But here's what we can take advantage of. We know x equals 4 is a solution, and this implies square root of 2 plus 1 to the fourth power plus square root of 2 minus 1 to the fourth power equals 17 plus 12 root 2. But since root 2 plus 1 and root 2 minus 1 are reciprocals, we can go ahead and do the following. Root 2 minus 1 is equal to 1 over square root of 2 plus 1. And now let's go ahead and raise both sides to the fourth power. That gives us root 2 plus 1 to the power negative 4. So this equals that, right? When you change the basis, the exponent changes. Easy. And you can basically switch these around and write the same thing for root 2 plus 1 to the fourth power. And that is going to become root 2 minus 1 to the power negative 4. Now let's go ahead and replace these here. And I mean to on the left hand side in both places. Replace square root of 2 plus 1 to the fourth power with this, which is root 2 minus 1 to the power negative 4 and the other one uh, with root 2 plus 1 to the power negative 4, and this sum is still the same, right? Because the left-hand sides are the same, so the right-hand side also stays the same. This means what? Our equation, remember, was square root of 2 plus 1 to the x, and the square root of 2 minus 1 to the power x equals 17, plus 12 root 2, and then the first solution that we found was x equals 4 because it satisfied the equation, but notice that here, x equals negative 4 also satisfies this equation. Therefore, x equals negative 4 is just another solution. Make sense? In other words, we have two solutions for this equation. And the solution set is just going to be negative 4 and 4 together. All right? Hopefully that makes sense. Now, what does the graph of this function look like? I haven't graphed it for you, but you can easily do it with Desmos or any other graphing tool. But if you kind of take a look at the graph of this function, you're going to notice the following. Uh, first of all, for um, certain x values, this function is going to increase, uh, actually decrease first, and then increase. So you're basically going to get something that looks like this. It's not a parabola, obviously. It's kind of like um, two, what is it called? Uh, two pieces of an exponential function put together, sort of, and that's the shape, uh, type of shape, sh type of shape that you're going to be getting. And one of the things that you notice from here is that if you replace x with negative x, the function stays unchanged. Therefore, this is an even function. That's why it's kind of symmetrical with respect to the y-axis. And when you intersect it with a horizontal line, which is y equals 34, obviously there's going to be two solutions that are opposites. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.